I'm here at the Environmental Education Center with Jerry Lee. He's the City of Rochester Hills uh, Forestry Operation Manager and also our resident gypsy moth expert. He's going to tell us a little bit about how to take care of gypsy moths, what the homeowner can do to, uh, to help ease the gypsy moth infestation. Jerry, what can you tell us about that? Well, Lance, we're looking for ways to reduce our reliance on the aerial spraying of, uh, to control gypsy moths. So we're putting more of our energies into educating the community on the different homeowner gypsy moth control techniques that are out there. How many different things are there that the homeowner can easily do to help control this infestation? Are they, are they fairly simple? Are there lots of different things or just a, a couple of basic things that they can do? There are three simple things that we can do, that citizens can do. In the winter quarterly, we had an article about the locating and destroying of gypsy moth egg masses. In the spring quarterly, we had an article about spraying BT on the leaves of infested trees while the caterpillars are still small. That's the aerial spray that the helicopter does, the BT? Well, homeowners can also homeowners apply can do BT too. too, as long as the caterpillars are still small. Okay. And then uh, the last thing is the placement and servicing of the burlap hiding bands, and that's the appropriate action to take at this time and at this stage of the gypsy moth caterpillar's development. They've, they've gotten bigger. The, the, the caterpillars have gotten to the point where they can, uh, the BT is no longer effective, and so that's why you go to the banding. Is right. that right? Right. BT wouldn't be effective at this stage of the caterpillar's development, so go into banding. That's the homeowner tactic that can be employed at this time. Okay, we have some bands here at the environmental center. Well, we have a burlap flap on a willow to see what uh, gets under there, and we have a burlap flap on a sugar maple, but the most appropriate trees to um, put the burlap flap or the burlap collectors are sometimes called is, a, is an oak, oak tree. tree. And we can step over to the oak tree, and I've got a couple of different banding techniques over there. Okay, Jerry, here we are at this uh, burr oak, and I see you've got some, uh, some burlap stretched around, looks like around some twine. What's the, uh, what's the procedure here? Take us through it. Well, we're trying to show there's two different burlapping techniques. Uh, this is the traditional application where you have a strip of burlap 12 to 18 inches wide tied around the trunk of the tree with a, a piece of twine or rope. Then you fold the top half down over the bottom half. And you'll notice the vertical cuts in the burlap strip and these create a series of flaps and this makes it easier to service um, the burlap collector. Now is it necessary to go all the way around the tree or just in several different spots? Or? Well, this is the, the traditional method. It's always been described in the, in the literature. But we've also found that the burlap square, a single flap by itself on smaller trees where they're difficult to band, or you have many trees that you're trying to work on, it's not practical to, to band 20 trees in your yard. You can put up 20 burlap flaps and still get a lot of caterpillars behind them. And what the, uh, what the idea is, is that the caterpillar looking for a place to hide will crawl up under the, uh, the flap before it pupates, is that right? Well, at this stage of the caterpillar's development, they have a habit where they feed up in the top of the tree, in the canopy of the tree at night, and they come down during the daytime to rest and to hide and get out of the heat of the sun. And that gives the homeowner an opportunity to go out in the late afternoon and early evening to service the burlap collector. Okay, good. Why don't you take a look under there? Is there did, have you checked these for any, uh, see if any caterpillars well, are? Let's see, we've got at least. Oh, there's, there's two here. That's a pretty good sized one there. Yeah, when they get that size, they're getting close to the where they're going to pupate to turn into the um, adult moth. And this is when you'd go and you'd, you'd, now you'd scrape them off into a salt solution, is that right? What would happen is usually I have a thumbtack or a push pin. I would hold the flap up out of the way, and I would take a small brush in my dish of soapy water and sweep the caterpillar into the soapy water. And I have with me today, and we can demonstrate that, is I have two soap solutions mixed up. I have one insecticidal soap which is mixed up the label directions, which is one tablespoon per pint. And I also bought some cheap dish soap that I mixed up with triple the insecticidal soap rate of three tablespoons per pint. And we're going to sweep caterpillars in the, in the bowl of soap and see which one's the most effective. Oh, okay, that's a good idea. Now, there's no, there's no danger to the homeowner. There's nothing the caterpillar can do to it. And even if it were, if you were to do it with your hand or it were to crawl on you, it's not recommended that you touch the caterpillar with your hands because they do have hairs on them, long hairs, and some people are sensitive to the hairs, have allergic reaction to the hairs. Great. Okay, let's, uh, let's do that. All right, Lance, the best way to service the collector, like I was saying, is to use a push pin to hold the burlap flap up and out of your way. And we're going to demonstrate two types of uh, soap solution today. This is the insecticidal soap I was talking about. We've got two caterpillars here we can experiment with, one there. And you saw one somewhere right else here in that little crevice right there. So this is the insecticidal soap. We'll see the reaction of the caterpillar when he hits the insecticidal soap. 
Bring it down in front of me. Bring it down in front of me. It's all almost immediate kill. Wow. Almost immediate kill. Now we can try the, the dish soap. Dish soap drip mixed up at triple the insecticidal soap rate. Oh. That little bugger is right in that crevice. You're lowered a little bit, Jerry. There we go. Come on out of there, you bugger. There we go. Okay, now you notice a little movement. bit of a drowning action here. It's not quite as quick of a kill. It's probably a little bit more humane to use the insecticidal soap, but both are effective. Yeah, that didn't take long. Still didn't take very long. Just I bought this quart of dish soap for a dollar, and the insecticidal soap for a pint is eight and a half dollars. There's enough soap in there probably to last you a couple seasons. Okay, we got some other places we can uh, we can go check some uh, some burlap flaps and yeah, and I think I can find at least one burlap flap that'll have quite a few caterpillars below it. What would be uh, what would what would you consider a large uh, a, typically a large number of caterpillars that you would find under a tree with a lot of infestation? It wouldn't be unusual to find 100 caterpillars under a burlap square of this size. Wow, we're in, in infestation. We don't have that type of infestation in Rochester Hills this year. We have had in the past. We probably will in the future. That's why we're really trying to share the information about the Get people area. involved right now at the level we are, and maybe we can stop it from ever exploding and becoming a real problem. Right. Okay, why don't you take us to, uh, to the next site? Here we are at another Burr Oak at a different site where we're hoping to find a few more caterpillars. But I was thinking, Jerry, on the way over, what would, uh, what would be wrong with just uh, squishing the caterpillars as opposed to brushing them into, uh, into the soap? You know, take out your knife and or a stick or whatever and just squash them. You could do that, Lance, but it tends to get kind of messy when you have a lot of caterpillars. Plus, it slows you down. It takes longer to kill them by squishing them than just to go ahead and sweep them into the soap. Plus, they're easier to dispose of. They're all in your container of soapy water. You can go to the back part of your yard and your, one of your shrub beds and just dump the whole mess at once or bury it. You know, I also noticed that this tree's got quite a bit of uh, defoliation. You can see it all up in the understory and out in the crown. That's all from uh, the caterpillars eating the leaves. Most of what we're seeing here, I believe, is gypsy moth feeding them. There's, there's other defoliators that are feeding right now, but I believe that this is mostly gypsy moth. Well, let's take a look under that band and see what uh, see what we can find. Oh, well, we've already pinned it up out of the way, Lance, but you can see there's quite a few caterpillars under there. And this is typical of a situation where there's a gypsy moth infestation. I mean, this demonstrates the value of, of, the, of the burlap collectors. Drop to the ground, Lance. Don't worry about it. We'll be back in the tree tomorrow. We'll get them tomorrow. All right. Boy, that was a big one there. Now, once they put these bands up, how long should they leave the bands on the trees? Well, Do they have to leave them on there year long, year round, or to take them down after uh, the summer's over, or what? Well, even though these brilliant collectors are unsightly, I believe it's a good idea to go ahead and leave them up uh, during the caterpillar pupation in the adult egg laying periods, which is in July and August, because the adult female doesn't fly, and she only moves a very short distance from the place where she pupated, and she'll look for a protected place to deposit the egg mass, such as below the burlap collector, and what that does, that gives us an opportunity to more easily locate and destroy the egg masses, egg masses in January and February. But don't remove the egg masses in the fall because that's when we're out there counting them. So leave them up uh, at least through December and then scrape and destroy them in January and February. But you go ahead and remove the burlap, all the burlap and all the rope in September because they'll be done laying egg masses by the end of August. Well, there's about five minutes worth of work and we killed maybe a uh, hundred Gypsy moth caterpillars. How, what would that equate to in eggs? How many? How many? How many eggs could those caterpillars produce? Would you? Would you? Ask well, if we're going to guess that there's 50% females there, and every female mates and, and deposits an egg mass, the average egg mass is 500 to 1,000 um, eggs. So we may have eliminated quite a few eggs here. Let, maybe 50,000 eggs that we've eliminated uh, in five minutes worth of work. And come back again there tomorrow, the next day. There could be more caterpillars under there. And if you continue this cycle, eventually we can gain the upper hand on the gypsy moth, and, uh, and hopefully we won't have it around defoliating the trees uh, in our city.